Hi. In this video, we'll talk about what are uh, nonlinear regressions and when do we use a nonlinear regression instead of a linear regression. So we use nonlinear regression when at least one of the parameters is not linear. Now, the important thing to remember here is we are talking about the parameters, not the not the variable. Okay, so a linear regression is where we have a nonlinear parameter, not a nonlinear variable. So let's give uh, an example. So let's say y equal to beta x, y equal to a plus beta square x. So which one is a linear and which one is a nonlinear one? Okay, okay. So this is beta x square. Okay, so here it is beta x square and here it is beta square x. Okay, so in this case, this is the nonlinear one. This is the nonlinear um, model or nonlinear regression model. Whereas this one, it's still a non-linear model because it is linear in parameter. Both the parameter a and b are linear in nature. Whereas here it is the beta square is considered to be non-linear. Okay, so here is an example and we'll take that to understand what nonlinear regressions are. So we're trying to plot the weight loss versus the days of an obese patient. So he's going through medication, an obese patient is going through medication and the weight loss uh, is been uh, has been plotted here. Okay, and this seems to be a nonlinear pattern and you know, we'll, we'll rather go for with a theoretically, uh, you know, perceived model. So here is one model where the um, Y says the weight of the individual, the individual who is going through the medication and is obese, uh, somebody who is uh, obese and is going through medication, so he's losing weight. And it's a function of the time, function of time, right? With time, the person who is going to lose weight and how many parameters are there? There is one parameter which is slope, there is a coefficient, uh, so sorry, this is the intercept, and this is the uh, slope coefficient, and there is an, another exponential parameter, theta. So we have got beta naught, beta one, and theta. Three parameters are to be found out from the data, and of course there is an error term. So I've got um, the ultimate lean weight, which is the, uh, you know, the uh, intercept, and then the total amount of weight to be lost with time and then the time taken to lose half the amount of weight remaining to be lost so that's given through the um, you know this exponential term so that's basically is the explanation for each of one of these parameters now all you need to do is that use the data we have to find out these three parameters beta not beta one and theta so what are the methods to be used to analyze this data to, uh, so the method that is to be used to iteratively uh, find it out. Okay, just put the data, whatever we have with uh, us, and just find it out. What is the values of these three parameters? So iterative procedure is one that is very often used. The number of iteration depends on how quickly the parameters converge. So for any optimization problem we end up with a uh, convergence of the parameters and how quickly we get these parameters converse uh, uh, will, will tell us how many iterations are required. The converse parameters are close approximate of you know, the three parameters. They may not completely uh, represent uh, the actual values. They might be very close to what we are expecting. The likelihood of the nonlinear regression is maximized when the residual sum of the square is minimized. So here also we just define a loss function. We define a loss function which takes care of y minus x. Uh, you know, uh, multi x is the your independent variables and some sort of a beta, right? Here we have beta and then exponential term theta. Um, uh, sorry, t by theta. Okay, so that's the loss function, and you know you can actually take the square of that, which gives you the uh, residual sum of square. 
So iteratively, you find out the beta naught, beta one, and theta for which the residual sum of square or the loss function is minimum. So that's the way you optimize the algorithm to find out the parameters values. There are three ways of computing the uh, parameters. One is the direct computation method. Second one is the derivative method. Third one is self-starting method. Now we'll see what these methods are. In the direct computation method, we initialize with the values of beta naught, beta one, theta by inspection of weight loss data. Okay, so initialization of the parameters are done by just you know uh, you know manually inspecting the weight loss data. Uh, weight loss is the dependent variable, right? Yes. So this is the R code that we have with us. You know, we sort of assume beta naught, beta one, and uh, theta to be taking some values, and these values are purely given from the uh, data that we have with us. And then we fit the model, sort of the model, the model that we just saw in the previous slide. And we do that iteratively and find at what value of beta naught, beta 1 and theta, we are getting the minimum of the loss function or minimum of the residual sum of square. Residual sum of square. And that's the way we find it out. Then the second one is the derivative method. In derivative method, uh, as you know that you use um, derivative to find the minimum value of function. For instance, if you have x square minus 2x plus 3, uh, and that's y. You can actually find out the minimum value of y by taking uh, the uh, first derivative uh, with respect to x and then second derivative with respect to uh, y and seeing, uh, you know, if it is negative or positive and, and then put that some value of x at that point and you get the negative, uh, the minimum value of y. So that's what we have learned in school uh, calculus, right? That's exactly what is being used here. So, uh, so here is the equation uh, and the tangent plane to the surface. Tangent plane is nothing but the first derivative at a, point, a coordinate point beta equal to beta naught is where uh, we have got uh, a mean vector and then offset vector uh, and then there is a matrix which defines the tangent plane. Each iteration gives us a new approximation of beta until convergence is reached. Pretty much like this last, uh, pro, uh, you know, uh, procedure, we also are approximating the value of beta, which gets changed in every iteration, and you get the converse value after a few number of iteration, depending on how at what point uh, you get the optimal value. Uh, so the derivative method uses numerical methods instead of you know random guessing in the previous. Uh, Previous method, right? We, we just guessed randomly to compute the formula of gradient unless first derivatives are supplied. So, if first, if you do not supply the first derivative to the, uh, to the to the algorithm, it is going to calculate the gradient uh, of the function, and that is being used to find out the final value. So, you can use the R code in order to be able to do that. We won't get to the details. All we can do is that we use the derivative function within R, which will do the job for us. Okay. Then third one is the self-starting method. The self-starting method fits a nonlinear model without explicit initial value. So that's one thing to be, uh, you know, take a notice of how it is different from the other two. So it fits a quadratic uh, regression. So it assumes the quadratic of some form. Uh, and then it, it fits the regression um, and it finds out the initial value of theta using some formula um, and that's we not see. So what is important here is that find initial values of beta naught and beta 1 by obtaining linear regression of y with respect to the exponential. So the exponential term is being now replaced with some sort of another uh, explanatory variable and you just find beta naught and beta through linear regression and then Finally, you express your theta naught value over here and you get the theta. So that's self-starting method uh, and you can also do that uh, using R. Okay, so you can write a self-start proce uh, procedure. You can that, that's going to help you out, you know, uh, finding 
finding the optimal value using this method. So end of the day what matters is the final values of beta naught, beta 1 and theta and that they should ideally be the same. And also what matters to you is the number of iteration, number of iterations and the um, you know coefficients value. So the coefficients values should ideally be same in all methods. The number of iteration of course will differ. The one that has lesser number of iteration is the one that should be preferred because that takes less computational power. So here is the final model that we have with us with the given data. So we have got three parameters in place. Beta naught happens to be 81.37. Beta 1 is 102.68 and theta is 141.9. Okay, now you can explain these, you know, uh, this coefficient from the model the way we explained the first slide and then, you know, take a notice or take this, you know, use that as one of the explanation. And the residual sum of square where we are getting these estimates is 39.2447. And then using this estimate, you can write the final model. The final model looks something like this with this intercept 81.37, slope coefficient 1 below. 2.68 and the exponential coefficient to be 141 plus 9. So given this equation you just you know um, you can fit a regression line uh, through this curve and this is non-linear in nature okay non-linear in nature um, and it need not be uh, just because it looks non-linear just because we have fit uh, a non-linear parameter you can actually fit a, a polynomial regression as well okay polynomial regression and polynomial regressions are not necessarily nonlinear regression okay they can be nonlinear uh, if if the parameters are not made to be nonlinear otherwise if the parameters are linear and it's just the variables which are of nonlinear forms which also can fit something uh, a distribution something like this is is not linear it, it rather said to be a polynomial one so it's important to understand the difference between nonlinear and polynomial regressions. So to summarize, we use a nonlinear regression model when uh, at least one of the parameters is nonlinear. So that's the important one to be remembered that one of the parameter in the model should be a not linear one and should not be linear. Nonlinear regression is an iterative procedure. So you, you find the likelihood and iteratively you, you optimize uh, the at, uh, the fun uh, loss function and find it out. Who is the number of iteration depend how quickly the parameters converge. So if the parameter converges quickly, you get less. You, you get all the values uh, with less number of iteration. Otherwise, it takes quite a, a lot, lot of time. And there are three ways of doing it. And we have seen that, right? We have seen how we can use the three ways of com uh, computing, uh, uh, you know, doing the optimization and getting the values of the coefficient. So that's uh, you know a brief introduction to how what is nonlinear regression, how it is different from uh, polynomial regression and linear regression and what are the ways in which you can compute the parameters of nonlinear regression. Thank you so much.